Welcome to the 16th Jeju Forum for Peace and Prosperity. I am Song Jihye. Now we will begin global citizenship for global community in post-COVID-19 era. And let me introduce the chairperson of the session. The chairperson is La jung the professor of Gacheon University, distinguished professor. Ra jung is University Distinguished Professor of Gacheon University, born in Seoul. And he has a Seoul National University and PhD from BA and MA. And we will have Professor Ra jung Good morning, I am Ra jung We have about 80 minutes today, and the theme of today's discussion is very important, and I am expecting many good opinions from the panelists and speakers. So I will shorten my speech here, and I would like to introduce Mr. Kim sung Kwan. And this man don't need to be introduced because he is very much well known. Do you have anything to say before your speech? No. And we have Miss Cindy Ru, and she will be attending through online. Miss Cindy Ru is a is right here and she is from Washington. Look at her beautiful smile. She is representation of Washington State Legislator and she is very progressive and she is very proper for this session speaker. Other than that, we have other panelists who are very well known and very qualified. Dr. Han kyung is Secretary General of Korean National Commission for UNESCO, and Professor Ju jin from Sangmyo University Department of History, and he is well known for a very important role, and he published my book, so that is one of important role. Very good job. And we have Director Yu jung gil you all know him. The important thing here, here is that we need to delegate time very well. So all speakers will have about 15 minutes. And we have 40 minutes for panel discussion. First, there is a discussion and then there will be time for an answer. And I know that participants here would also like to say something and we would love to hear from you. We have about 40 minutes and please take your time for about 10 minutes and then we will have about 10 minutes left. So we will use that time for Q&A session. What do you think? Since no one objected, we will going to start and please stick to your time. And let's have Mr. Kim sung -gon. Good afternoon, everyone. I am President Sung Gong Kim from Overseas Korean Foundation. So today, I'm going to have a presentation titled In the Post-COVID Era, Korean Community as a Global Citizen. As we all know, the coronavirus that started in China and swamped the world, as of June 10th, 
has recorded over 170 million confirmed cases and 3.7 million deaths. It is truly an unprecedented pandemic. As vaccines become available, it is expected that the COVID-19 situation will subside, but no one knows when or where a more virus, virus than corona will emerge. Isn't there already an emergency because of Delta mutation from India? However, the coronavirus has taught humanity a valuable lesson, which is that in order for mankind to survive, whether individuals or nations, we must fundamentally change the paradigm of life. I like to express this as the dawn of new civilization, from formal heaven to later heaven, as in the concept of modern Korean thought. Scientists agree that the root cause of COVID-19 pandemic is the destruction of the ecosystem caused by climate change. Therefore, in order for mankind to survive the catastrophe of climate change and achieve sustainable developments, we must escape from the endless competition of material possession, which has accelerated since the Industrial Revolution. Humans have produced and consumed many goods, believing the more material they have, the greater their happiness will be. However, now, isn't this materialistic pattern of life driving humanity into catastrophe? However, it is impossible for us to return to our primitive life now. Also, many underdeveloped countries on the planet need to keep growing. That's why UN is proposing sustainable development. In other words, economic growth that considers the environment, fair distribution of wealth, and resolution of inequality among countries are its content. It's not easy, but in order for mankind to survive, it must go like this. British historian of civilization Ardo Toynbee has said that over 20 civilizations in human history went through a cycle of birth, aging, being sick, and dying. And with the development of science and technology, the boundaries of the past regional civilizations have collapsed. And now we have entered the era of global civilization, in which the entire Earth is one community. And a new spiritual civilization to lead this global civilization is needed, and he focused on Northeast Asia as a candidate for this new spiritual civilization. In fact, Northeast Asia was a point where the civilization of the East and the West collided most severely in the 19th and the 20th centuries. In the midst of this conflict, the Koreans suffered the most. Again, in the midst of this conflict, the Koreans suffered the most, as in the saying, Sunbyung Jagui, meaning someone who has been sick becomes a healer. I believe that Koreans will invent a new spiritual civilization for mankind in the future. I majored in religious studies, and then I paid attention to a series of the national religions that arose in the 19th century in the Korean Peninsula, where Western and Eastern religions met. One of the common ideas of these national religions is awakening. Here, awakening means the beginning of a new civilization. And now, for the mankind, from the dark age, formal heaven, to the bright later heaven, the transformation is taking place. Amidst the invasion of great powers, when we had the darkest times in the 19th and 20th centuries, the leaders of national religions predicted that Korean people will lead this new civilization in the future, and demanded the Koreans first become a new human beings. The characteristic of the former heaven and later heaven they speak of are as follows. First, the former heaven is a world where matter dominates the mind. In other words, it is a world where the human mind becomes a slave to material things and all individuals and nations compete with each other in order to possess each other's materials. And in a world where they are willing to go to war to steal other things. On the other hand, the later heaven is a world in which material and spiritual civilization harmonize, but the mind dominates materials, and it is a world in which all human beings find their true self. Second, the formal heaven is a conflicting civilization in which the strong oppresses and discriminate against the weak, whereas the later heaven is a coexisting civilization in which the strong and the weak help each other. In other words, in the world of former heaven, women to men, workers to capitalists, unilaterally submit and live like slaves. In the world of later heaven, it is a world where they respect each other and coexist. 
Third, the formal heaven was a human-centered world in which humans destroy and conquer nature, but the later heaven is where humans and nature coexist and ecological civilization. Fourth, in the formal heaven, it is common to see religion, ideology reject each other, and words were often weighed. However, for the later heaven, it is the world in which various religions and political ideologies recognize each other's values, and all religions and ideologies cooperate with each other for the common good of man, of mankind. Lastly, while the former heaven is a civilization of a struggle that hates and resents each other, the latter heaven is a civilization of peace that appreciates and loves each other. In other words, it is a world of morality in which teachings taught by great human saints such as Confucius, Buddha, and Jesus are realistically completed through the spiritual growth of mankind. In the face of the latter heaven, it proposed that our human beings go beyond the boundaries of nations and people and become global citizens. People become uh, ethnic, become a member of the nation or the ethnicities, Koreans, Chinese, Japanese, Americans. However, they compete with each other and sometimes even wage wars to make each other prosperous. However, if aliens are to attack and occupy Earth night, we will have to work together to defend this alien invasion. The aliens that threaten us now are none other than malicious viruses that have emerged due to environmental destruction. When the Earth is destroyed, what is the meaning of the competition between Koreans, Japanese, and Americans? Being a global citizen is probably the answer to the theme of this GG Forum, sustainable peace and inclusive prosperity. Now, as we're entering the era of formal heaven, I'll talk about the peace regime on the Korean Peninsula from the point of view of the global citizens. There are many large and small ethnic groups on the planet today. Among them, those who have formed a single nation for more than a thousand years on the Korean Peninsula and shared a single culture are called Koreans. It is about the same size as the UK in terms of population and the size. These Koreans are currently divided into three groups. First, North Koreans in the northern part of the Korean Peninsula, and South Koreans in the south southern part of the Korean Peninsula, with a population of 52 million, and the overseas Koreans scattered around the world with a population of 8 million. The history of the Korean ethnic community divided into these three groups is not long. All called this history of division is the Korean community a diaspora. Diaspora means to live scattered, and the word comes from the history of the Jews scattered all over the world. The first diaspora of the Korean people was caused by the invasion of the Korean Peninsula by the Great Power, which is Japan. And the second diaspora was caused by the division of the Korean Peninsula. The reason I call the division of the Korean Peninsula into the second diaspora is because Koreans living abroad commit and communicate with each other. However, Koreans between the two Koreas cannot even meet or even communicate because they are completely cut off. The first diaspora and the second diaspora, both diasporas are byproducts of the aforementioned former heaven and are also the result of the Industrial Revolution that began in the West. In other words, the Industrial Revolution that started in England in the 18th century caused Western powers to colonize Asia and Africa. Among them, Japan, the only country that succeeded industrialization in Asia, made Korea the first colony, and this is the historical background that caused the first diaspora of the Koreans. Some fled poverty and others immigrated to Russia, China, and the United States to fight for independence. And then, under Japanese colonial rule, millions of Koreans came to live in Japan either voluntarily or forcefully. The Industrial Revolution in Britain also gave rise to the birth of capitalism and communism, which eventually gave rise to the second current diaspora in the 20th century. In other words, the British Industrial Revolution, which developed into capitalism, provided material abundance to mankind, but on the other hand caused class conflict between capitalists and workers, creating an opportunity to create communism. And this had an impact on the independence movement of the Korean people and the Japanese colonial rule, causing independence activists to divide into the left and the right. When Japan surrendered to the Allied forces in 1945, Japan withdrew from the Korean Peninsula. The North Korean Peninsula was divided around the 38th parallel, which the Soviet army occupying the remaining north and the U.S. occupying the south. In addition, 
domestic political forces were also divided into left and right. And the Korean War, which broke out in 1950, is closely related to Jeju 4.3 incident. And as the Korean War became an international war between the capitalist country center on the United States and the communist power center of the Soviet Union, the three tedious war ended in the draw with millions of casualties and separated families. This is the process of the second Korean diaspora. Earlier, I talked about the paradigm shift of civilization from the formal heaven to the later heaven. Now, peace on the Korean Peninsula must also be resolved within this paradigm. First, it was said that paradigm of later heaven is from the resentment of gratitude and from hatred to love. What is now dividing our Korean Peninsula into north and the south is formerly a ceasefire line, and the North nuclear weapon and the South U.S. forces are in confrontation. However, the root cause that divided North and the South is the Korean people's heart and the people of the great powers around the Korean Peninsula. Therefore, what should be prioritized over any diplomatic or military solution between two Koreas, South Korea, and Japan, North Korea is a reconciliation from the heart. Second, if the world of former heaven is the era of supremacy, the world of later heaven is the world of coexistence. The same is true for inter-Korean relations. The South emphasizes freedom and the North emphasizes equality, but freedom and equality are complementary concepts. Ultimately, the two Koreas must realize that they are independent communities and launch the One Korea movement. If reconciliation between two Koreas is difficult at the moment, even overseas compatriots or overseas Koreans should step forward and act as a mediator for national reconciliation. Third, I said we should look at each other from the standpoint of global citizen. The same is true of relations between South and North Korea. It's no longer an enemy of neighboring countries, but human desire to destroy the earth and the environmental destruction are common enemies that mankind must overcome together. Therefore, the South and North must cooperate with each other to save the earth. The word Korean is derived from the word Korea, which means very beautiful. Now in the uh, Later heaven, Koreans must properly value their name. So what is so beautiful? Of course, the mountains of Korea are beautiful and the actors of K-pop are also beautiful. But the most beautiful thing is the founding ideology of Korea. In other words, when Tan Kyung founded Gojoseon, the first country of the Korean people, the founding ideology was Hongi Ingan, which means to benefit the human world widely. And it is also a basic philosophy of education in Korea today. So this ideology is the same concept of the global citizen claimed by the United Nations today. And it is a concept that is aligned with the ethics of a higher religions, including Christian teaching of love your neighbor as yourself. The new spiritual civilization of Northeast Asia that will lead this global village that Arnold Twimby expected is the same as the later heaven that appeared in the modern history of Korea, I believe. In other words, it is a civilization of awakening, where spirit and material harmonize. The strong and the weak coexist. Humans and nature coexist. Various religions and ideology cooperate for the common good of mankind and turn resentment into gratitude and hate into love. And this should be practiced first by Koreans, who have been carrying the cross of hardship over the past half a million of years of history. Because the Korean people have suffered more tribulation than anyone else. So expecting the day would come first. Today, Jeju and the outlet of peace, I'd like to express my gratitude to everyone who made this opportunity the Jeju Peace Forum, and I wish health and peace to all who attend. Thank you very much. It was really touching. Thank you very much. It was very impressive. I should not be the one who should be applauding, but it I couldn't help. He had touched upon Korean Peninsula issue, Christianism, economy, politics. I think you deserve Nobel Peace Prize. It was that much good. I know that 
Mr. Han and Ju is also here today, and they are both very much expert in this field, and I'm very much expecting the discussion today. Now we have Ms. Cindy Ryu, representative in the Washington State. Cindy Ryu, are you ready? Hello. Your Korean is very good. Yes, I've learned Korean. Miss Ryu, we're expecting. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for inviting me to this. Washington State Legislature, where I'm serving my uh, sixth term, and I chair the Community and Economic Development Committee with jurisdiction over disaster preparedness, resiliency, telecommunications, broadband, state parks, and tourism, everything that I love. So the global citizenship to our world Korean community in the post-COVID-19 era, this is the theme, and that's with each of us needing to embrace the concept of global citizenship and taking steps toward peace and specifically environmental preservation. And as we all know, it is known that ecological destruction due to climate change is the main cause of COVID-19, which changed the world in a matter of months. 2020 and 2021 will be remembered for this pandemic, which turned the world upside down. And the premise as you have heard, is that global citizenship must become mainstream in the post-COVID-19 era. And I agree. Economic competitions between countries only make global environmental issues even more difficult to solve. Korea and Koreans, which curb the spread of COVID-19 with its K-quarantine model, must lead in global citizenship. And the 8 million overseas Koreans must actively participate in this endeavor. And as we all know, until now, Koreans have focused on economic growth and peace on the Korean peninsula and elsewhere. However, it is time for Korea to join the ranks of advanced countries and broaden its views by embracing the concept of global citizenship and taking steps, concrete steps toward peace and environmental preservation. As an American citizen and a Washingtonian since 1969, I will sp speak from where I am. As an American uh, uh, in US, as in Korea, the question we are asking is, what will it take to conserve 30% of our land and waters by 2030? The 30, 30, 30 by 30 conservation movement to agree to a biodiversity target and for international cooperation around climate change. And as you know, over 70 countries have committed to this protection. And I'm so happy to hear that Korea has joined the United Kingdom's Global Ocean Alliance to support the 30 by 30 target. This is indeed good news for the people, including Koreans. First of all, this cooperation will lead to widespread protection of the natural world to help stem climate change, mitigate natural disasters, such as wildfires and flooding, both of which we experience in Washington state, and to lift up our economies, including a green economy. Second, it will improve our quality of life. As a Christian minister's wife, uh, Seattle Yonap Jangnogyue, Yu Changmyung Moksanim Samoroso. I believe in the biblical description of Earth. Genesis 131 says, And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. It was very good, and it is our job to keep it that way. Third, it can be our Korean legacy for the future. No matter our religion, Korean Confucianism or Yugyo is the fundamental foundation of Korean culture. Koreans at home and abroad, we all share the goals of creating an orderly and peaceful world by overcoming greed and by respecting one another. So why is the urgency? 
This past winter, Washington State had the snowiest February in 20 years. Yet the following two months, we had the driest March and April since 1926. Seattle, well known for its rain, unfortunately had a beautiful dry spring weather. Now we have a drought advisory throughout most of the state. Heat warning uh, is going on right at this time um, with excessive uh, uh, heat and dryness. Seattle is expecting 107 degrees, which is 41 degrees centigrade. And why does that matter? Threats of wildfire, and this picture is of just a large brush fire, is a huge concern for us. And it is increasing every single year. A small town, which was incorporated more than a hundred years ago, Malden and its nearby Pine City, they were destroyed. More than 80% of their structures destroyed. Their post office, city hall, fire station, they're all gone. More, even beyond buildings and structures, the increasing incidences of wildfires put at extreme risk are wheat, potatoes, hay, onions, wine, apples, cherries, and other crops for both domestic consumption and for export. Washington State produces the world's highest potato yield per acre and 20% of all U.S. potatoes. We also grow hops for beer. More than 70% of U.S. hops are grown right here in Washington state. Along with two neighbors, Oregon and Idaho states, we account for nearly 100% of U.S. hop production. And if you prefer wine over beer, Washington wines are also at risk, as is an $8.4 billion economic impact. In fact, earlier this month, a small winery had to cancel its 2020 vintage due to wildfire, wildfire smoke-tainted grapes. Apparently it's not a good flavor. And so why that? We all know that pursuing and meeting this 30 by 30 target could yield significant benefits, not only for a huge range of wildlife species and their habitats, habitats, but for people as well. And an increasing body of scientific evidence indicates that one third of the cost-effective solutions to climate change could come from nature. So what can I do? What can we do? Of course, we can organize, we can plug in, and we can express our values from exactly where we are. If you're super ambitious, of course, please go ahead and organize but you don't have to. You don't have to create your own movement as there are many existing structures. This is just a partial list, A to Z, just for my state. One of the organizations that I am plugged into is PENOIR, Pacific Northwest Economic Region, where US legislators, Canadian members of parliament, business sponsors, and experts in the field work together to address cross-border and sector-by-sector -sector issues. PENOR also houses the Center for Reg Regional Disaster Resilience, including cybersecurity, which is becoming a much bigger issue. Several member states, provinces, First Nations, and Native American tribes share the Columbia River Basin. And so it made a lot of sense for us to organize, cooperate, and participate in this way over the past 30 years within governmental statute. So coming closer to home, you can express your values from exactly where you are. And this is how I got to where I am. I was born in Korea, followed my dad with the rest of the family to Borneo. We went to Manila to wait for our visas to enter the USA before we starve to death. And I've been a Washingtonian for the last 52 years and serving my sixth term in the state legislature. And one of my colleagues is Representative Joe Fitzgibbon. 
he is also serving his sixth term and he worked his entire political career, both as a staffer and then as a legislator on this one issue of climate change. Finally, earlier this year with his leadership, we succeeded in passing the Washington State Climate Com Commitment Act to reduce carbon emissions. And here are some of the comments about the bill from the Environmental Defense Fund. And for the final bill language, the Pew Charitable Foundation and I worked with the governor's staff to add resiliency language. And I hope to build on that work. And even more uh, interesting and fun actually is that the governor signed the bill in the city of Shoreline where I live and also served previously as mayor. And the work continues beyond the state legislature. In my own county, beavers are hard at work. And so are scientists as to how they might benefit our environment. Americans had nearly killed off all the beavers for their pelts earlier last century, but they're back and building beaver dams. The work remains to be done for beaver coexistence and for creating space for these animals and to harness the power of beaver engineering and all the storing the water, recharging the groundwater levels, cooling the water downstream, creating wetlands for many other species, recovery and survival. These are all things important in a warming world. So just like the beavers, let's all pull our own weight, one twig, one branch and one tree at a time. Let's organize, plug in, express our values exactly where you are. And you know what, we can do this because we are Koreans. Thank you very much, 감사합니다. It was a really impressive presentation from Cindy Ru. As a chairperson, what I liked was they're a good match. As President Kim gave a presentation in a broader view for the, he uh, touched upon the 2000 year of history, including philosophy, religions, mythologies. So I thought that is, does he have a plan to create a religion? <laughs> so we could see the current situation with the perspective of the world history. And also, Representative Ryu gave a very uh, detailed view on the global situation. So they're a really good couple and good match. Especially from the second presentation, I thought, just like before, there was a model for development. So there is a US model, so we can benchmark that. And if there's a Britain model, then we can follow that. But as Cindy pointed out that we don't have our own model. So we have to play a role in the world as a defense countries. But we just observe what others do. But I think that we cannot just blindly follow their roots. So as the cases in the Washington state, the similar cases are questions are raising at the, be ra being raised. So as a global citizen, we have to think carefully what we can do by ourselves and we can the method to develop our own method or our model in for the development of the mankind, the future. So that was my idea after listening to your presentation. Thank you very much. So now let's start discussion. So the discussion will start with the Secretary General Kyung Gu Han. So as you already well know, just give your ideas freely. You can just give any ideas to the presenters. I believe the audience are looking forward to your honest and critical like comment for the presentations. So I'm the first panelist and I feel fortunate for it because 
Professor Yu and Dr. Zhu are the great uh, figures. So if I was the last panelist, I, f I would feel much burden what to say. So I was really nervous of the order of the discussions. So uh, I feel Professor Zhu is a close friend of my dad. And also I read Professor Zhu's books when I was a student. So it is a great honor for me to uh, have a discussion together. So with the topic for today's session, it is a great pleasure for me as a scholar for the hum humanity to be in a part of this discussion. So as our presenter already mentioned, this organization was built for the peace regime. And now we went through a two words, and actually this the UNESCO has a lot of like difficulties, but we are striving ourselves to be successful. I call this a beautiful paradox. So from the first presentation, I could learn the most important concept from uh, of the Korean religions, which is awakening. And from that point of view, we can review the world history. What I felt interesting was he analyzed the current world and current situation. Now we're complaining the current world as it is the environment is polluted and there are so many conflicts and then even the virus and the pandemic that is arises. So we see this world as a dark age. However, President Kim Consider this world as the entrance of the era of awakening. It was really impressive. And also he mentioned the ideology of Hong Yi Gingan, the founding ideology of Korea. So with that ideology, Koreans had like promoted and pursued global citizenship even in the past, even from the past. So we Koreans had a lot of like disasters and catastrophe in the past, but rather it contributed a lot for us to be more uh, to be stronger. And I really agree with the idea. So uh, actually as a panelist, I cannot just say I agree with you. So I have to toss a question for you. So yesterday, I felt that if I gave you a lot of questions, we can have some difficulties because the time is limited. So I'll just give you one question. So the general vision, I really agree with you uh, with that. So now you also served as a politician as well. And now you're leading a very important organization. So you propose your vision, then how can we implement your vision? I'd like to hear the detailed methods or the process for implementation of your vision. I think it would be good to hear your detailed plan in order to pursue the direction because we have to find out the route or the path to achieve the goal. So what, where should we start or where should we go for it? So I believe I want to hear the answers for my question. So we pursued global perspective and promoted the general goal and the ideology of the funding uh, the founding ideology of Korea Hong Yi Gingan the humanitarianism also in line with those perspectives but if you give a closer look to the ideologies we realize that Koreans have emphasized the common goal even from the past so that runs down to our blood and DNA so as also the representative Ru mentioned well actually the presentation itself was really interesting because I thought the Idaho is a representative state for like potatoes, but actually the yield per acre was bigger in 
Washington, it was really shocking for me because my sister is living in Washington State, and I've never known about it. I think it's a really interesting approach toward the global citizenship, in line with the sustainable development while considering with the climate change. So the climate change actually has some impact on our daily lives, but how? So as a UNESCO Korea, we also is trying to publish a book uh, under the theme of the climate change in our life. So the global uh, climate change is a global phenomenon, which is really grand. So it is really important. However, it is hard to realize in our daily life. So there are some problems for our activities. So there is a grand concept, and it is a really important topic, but it's boring. So that's the problem of, of our works. So we always think about how to solve that boring like feature of our own work. But we can start from our daily life about the climate change, as Cindy Liu mentioned. So she just give a detailed list of what they can feel of the climate change in their daily lives. So it is not about the protecting wildlife, animals, or planet. So it is a matter of protecting our own lives. So then when there's environmental activists and activities in Korea, people claim that our life and our is more important than the environment itself. So there were a lot of claims and complaints like that in the past. So in that idea, I believe the Washington's approach was really important. And also, we could see the case of beaver in the Washington, but otter is more important for the Korean environment. It was the environmental icon for Koreans. So what I want to ask to Cindy Liu is as a representative for the Washington state, but at the same time, you are the political leader of the overseas Korean uh, living in the United States. So for the cooperation of the US and the Korea and the, for the cooperation for Jeju and Washington state, but we can think about this issue at the same time. So as an overseas Korean was living in the state, what we can do as a member of the overseas uh, Korean community in the States? That's my question for you. So to make the United States a better place for living, so what can like overseas Korean do? Because they're under discrimination, but at the same time, but they discriminate the minor other minorities at the same time, and I feel regret for it. So uh, while talking about this item, so I was scolded by Professor Chu <laughs> because he told me that you cannot teach others blindly because overseas Koreans also have their plans. So I'm wondering what kind of plans or what kind of action plans they have as a global citizens in the US. So they also want to live as a global citizens and how much interest they have in the environmental like issues as uh, like residents of the US and the overseas Koreans. And I, I'm also wondering if there is any chance or room for us to cooperate as a Korean and the US, uh, US citizenship. So in here, we have the experts who had the longest career, uh, record of education. So, Well, with those experts, even I had a very embarrassing like experiences and memories like for the environment. So when they go to the states, they just like hunt adversaries and um without like any careful thought. So there are some interesting memories like that. So as a member of the overseas community, uh, Korean community in the states, what kind of like plans or ideas do you have? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for your opinion and thank you for your question. And the speakers, please answer the panelist question. Next, we have Professor Zhu. Professor Zhu is very famous historian 
in Korea. And especially, he has a very good sense of the times. I knew that BTS was famous, but I didn't understand why exactly. I tried to listen to their music, but it was difficult for me to get involved and enjoy it. Professor Jun is sure younger than me, but he's not that young generation. But I heard he is enjoying the music of BTS. So I really admire his sense of culture and music. And please, I'm expecting your opinions. Thank you very much. I am Chu Jino. I am historian. And I was the curator, chief curator in the History Museum in Gwanghwamun. When I heard that Mr. Kim is having a speech, I thought that had never happened again. I thought he was a politician, and now I realize that he's a philosopher. philosopher. Since I am historian, I want to approach different from different perspective, not from religion, not from myth. History is made by human beings. So based on that, we have to under history and we have to analyze history. And based on that, we should have to discuss our future together. And and it is very difficult to systemize the idea However, this is a utopian aspiration, but how and when will this utopia come to us? We don't know about that. We are expecting it and we are analyzing it and the way in a world that we live, we have never experienced the former heaven later awakening. And the in course of that, we have to have the analysis in terms of history. And in the middle, there is Korean Peninsula, and this nationalism-centered value system exists here. So the global network from the foundation and systematically we are living in a multi-religion society. And I think first we need to get empathy from people. So based on that empathy, we can expand through global network. We have to have some concerns and aspiration, not just aspiring for the utopia for the future, that is not enough. So in order to specify it, I hope we can build an opportunity here. And you just mentioned, you said Earth people. What I feel is that through pandemic, nationalisms are getting stronger. So it is difficult to move from one country to other country, and it is diff difficult to enter other countries. And if you, even though you get vaccinated, you will have to be quarantined for two weeks. That means it is state-oriented, not the people. So what we have pursued before, which was global society, we are going back. And this pandemic is making that phenomenon more stronger. So how can we overcome that?
I know it is meaningful to pursue an ideal, but from here, in this point, what will be necessary to realize that value? So I think we need empathy for that. And in terms of the foundation, I have participating the program for Korean teaching school, and I have some experience of teaching in some of those programs. And there is a education and culture center for people living around the world, and I have been proposed for as a lecturer. And this is supplier-based mindset. We, we want to teach this to youth. It is us, it is teach, teachers-oriented. But what do they want? What do the youth want? We need to approach from the place closer to youth. When I was a visiting scholar in Europe, I went to UT and in, in Austin, and I have teached for about a year. And there were many students who were Korean Americans. And they said, what you teach us is very much different from what I learned from my parents, because their parents their value are still not changed since when they left Korea. So they remember Korea as the 50s and 60s, as in 50s and 60s. So they're teaching the values that they learn in 50s and 60s to their children. So there is a gap in between. So the students I taught they said a lot of things to their parents about me and their parents invited me because they couldn't do that to their children. So when you want to share something, it is not about giving something. It is about fulfilling what they don't have, giving what they don't have. So for the people living abroad, our foundation had invested huge budget to Korean language school. So Korean, the language issue, the commonality of language is one of the commonality. One is blood, second, language, third, region. So that's how we build the nation. So people living abroad, they are not living in the same place as us. So we have to keep the commonality of language. But if they don't learn Korean, then that commonality will disappear. So what, what is left? So maybe by learning Korean history, maybe we, if we have the same knowledge and information about Korean history, then it will help them to build nationalism. So we should not be limited to Korean language school, Korean education. That is also important, but, but we should also implement history education, not just one-sided education, but we should teach students, we should not teach students living abroad with the same curriculum in Korean school. So we need to consider for the measures, like House Representative Ms. Cindy Ryu said, what you said 
is that from now on, the Korean American society, we should not just concern the Korean society only, but we should also be interested what's happening in Korean American society. And then I think that was your purpose. And I fully agree with your opinion. And Korean community is about serving and being sensitive to the issue and creating value there. And if you have an opportunity, if you have any solution for that, please say your opinion, please. Thank you, Professor Joe. We could hear a great discussion in the comments. And the comments was really realistic and he dealt with the issues and the challenges that we can face in our real daily lives. And I could like came up with one idea while listening to his uh, comments. So after the liberation, the issue was first raised by Arnold Toynbee. In 1943, he had dealt with the issues after war. So he was a director of the Research Institute of the Post-War Issues. And at the latter part of his research paper, we could uh, find ideas and comments about the Korean case. So after Japan surrendered from the war, we have to liberate Korea, but with two different reasons. But we have to be careful because Korea has no experience to operate the modern like society. And also the um, ethnic ethnicities in Asian countries tend to create a group, a subgroup inside the country and which war. So actually, I didn't like Arnold Toynbee that much. Oh, he's a great professor and a scholar, but I thought that he's a false historian while I was reading his books because he's always publishing a thick book, but after I uh, reviewing his paper, I was really mad at his like, analysis. But when thinking in the back, uh, thinking again, I thought that his opinions was right because we really did divide our Korean Peninsula into two different states and which were. So after, as a student, professor, diplomat, I could meet a lot of Korean communities living on overseas. And there is a disruption and the division all the time. There's a tendency to create those kind of divisions in any part of the world. So I wrote a book about it while I was a professor in the United States. I collected a number of uh, like cases, about like 250 cases uh, studying why Koreans fight each other. So there are a lot of causes. So one of the case can refer to like this. So they go, to, they do the um, service, a church after renting a like American church, and they could collect the sum of like funds to buy a church, and then the division start and the fight start. So telling that it was the order from the God or order from the Jesus. So there is no compromise and just creating a conflict. So as a pastor. Why they fight each other while believing in God? And he answered that it's God's will. So that's the reason why we have so many Korean churches in the States, because they fight each other and divide each other. So then later, the America can be filled with Korean churches. It was kind of one of my experience. So I couldn't know how to understand and interpret that phenomenon or the cases. Of course, there can be some causes, but sometimes none. So the division and the fight is always a challenge and problem for us. It was really like realistic problems. And I thought in this way too. So we are not talking about like great topics like Koreans mission and the later heaven or the bright age. 
So there's a over problem for the overseas Korean community. So there, what? How can we make positive like influence on the overseas Korean community? So and then I thought about the Filipini. So I wrote a lot of articles, and I. I add, I propose them to like create a word of Filipiati because it is common that there's a huge gap between the first and generation of the overseas Korean because the first generation of the overseas Korean cannot um, speak English that well while the second generation are fluent in English and they can go to the higher ranks uh, so there's a, the gap between the first and second generations are widening. However, Korean people are famous for uh, being uh, making a good practice of the Filipini. So while I was in the States, I like gather the uh, funds. So there's a funds, but if you use them, uh, you have to fill them again, not to like waste, like waste them. So it could be practiced for about two times, but then later they spend them all. So I asked, how could you spend them all? So, and they told me that there was a like, there was election fraud for the president's election at their school. So they had to go to the lawsuit. So they, they spend that, spend the whole money in that way. So this is the uh, like reality of the problems that we can face for the overseas Korean community. And I did the same thing for the other communities who are living in different countries. But surprisingly, there's, still doing the uh, word of Filipini. So also we can give the um, award for the overseas Korean who is in the good like literature activities or the other activities. But actually those awards has been disappeared. It's not continuing uh, continued anymore, but still they have the word for the Filipini. So like, like that, there are other many cases, but I'm not sure if my experience relate to the overseas Korean community, but, but like this was the um, comment that I like to add. So uh, lastly, I like to hear comments and discussion from Mr. Yu. Nice to meet you. Hello, I am Ryu jung I was mostly focused on environmental issue and also inter-Korean issue and the development for Korea for about four and five years. Today's theme is global citizenship for Korea community in post COVID-19 era. And I will point out some agendas. Think about what happened last year, early last year. A lot of people thought after it was declared as pandemic, it was very big issue and many people had concern what will happen in the future and there were many discussions about COVID-19 and many people were very curious what will happen after COVID-19 so before and after COVID-19 everyone thought that the world will change after COVID-19 and this had made new normal so new order new society would come to us which would be totally different from the past and many of us thought that without change we will not survive and this sentiment had been rising very much and for environmental organization like us it will bring climate change faster and we should take this as a vaccination so COVID-19 is a disaster for us but if we are facing climate change then this may give us a big message that we need to try to do a transition and this can be a good message and this had been discussed numerous times and in the past we were focusing on growth oriented society so massive production massive economy and all the growth and development index was assessed by the amount how they how much they produced this general production value had been evaluated with wrongful idea 
because they thought Earth was infinite. So this was a wrong value that we have known. So without change, without change, we won't be able to make new hope. And this was the environmental message that we need to take on. And it had worked as a mess messenger. And it was like COVID-19 that had played the messenger role. And after 7.5 years or 8 years, we have to stop temperature rise of 1.5 degrees. It is like when water fills a cup, if a water fills the cup and if it l exceeds a certain le level, it will flow. And if we exceed 1.5 degrees, we won't be able to go back. So without changing, without changing completely, it will be difficult for us. And that is the message for climate change. And we have gone through growth stage. So now we are in a maturity stage. So we are living in a minus growth or low growth age. So in order to survive in this generation, we need to cooperate and we need to live together, coexist. And this is happening in Korea society also. So if you think about the cooperation society and sharing society, this is focusing on people's relationship. We are not focusing on material society. And this is the signal that we are living in a maturity stage. So COVID-19 had played its role as a messenger before climate change actually hits us. And this is giving us a great message that we need to change fast. And like Mr. Kim had mentioned before, the sky opening first or not after people are changing the civilization. Sky had opened. We call it sky opening in Korea. And that is a huge challenge in front of us. And the growth and development was the index that can evaluate us in the past. But now, without taking care of and taking responsibility of this Earth issue, we won't be able to go further. And this inter this Earth issue, this global issue should be dealt together with cooperation. And this also applies to inter-Korean issue. And since there it was still imperialism in Korea, so resolving the peace issue in Korea means that we should escape from this imperialism. We have peace issue also here in Korea, but we really have to fix this climate change issue, which is a global issue. So in terms of trying to resolve inter-Korean peace issue, people who concerned about inter-Korean issue, they only worried about Korean Peninsula. And people who were very <laughs> focused on environmental issue, they didn't care about inter-Korean issue. But these two should be combined. We have to combine this and concern these about this together. We have to escape from imperialism and we have to think about climate issue at the same time. We have to make a united big country together, very big country of unification, making through unification. This is a huge acknowledgement that is reflecting the growth-oriented society. But we have to build Korean Peninsula, which is which should be sustainable, which should be there are about eight million people living outside Korea and they are very much necessary during the unification stage. There are about 2.5 million people in China and Japan, and these people will have power here. And when we are trying to resolve the conflict and confrontation, after the unification of Korean Peninsula, when we want to build green society together, we need a power from around the world. 
and we need energy from people, Korean people living around the world. And in this process, after the unification, when we try to build Korean Peninsula, one Korea, one Korea, and I think we should have a civilization. 네, 이 문제를 해... transition at the same time. So in this process, civilization transition should happen again, and I hope this can play another opening of the sky. And this, there are many people living around the world, and I hope they can participate in paid this journey of bringing up the energy together. Thank you. Thank you very much for the great comments. As I expected, we are we have quite limited time for this session. Therefore, I'd like to get question from the audience first, or you can leave your comments if you have any for our presenters and the panelists. So then we'll give you an answer. So is there anyone anyone who has question or comment from the floor? No one? Okay, as we're running out of our time, we would like to hear answers from our presenters, President Kim and Representative Yu. So I'd like to hear comments and the answers from President Kim first. Okay, so from now on, I like to get my feedback for all the questions and comments from three panelists, panelists and chairperson all together. Uh, Secretary General Han asked me, "What is the detailed action plan to implement the big concept of awakening?" So, in the modern society. When we um and when we invited or absorbed the civilization of the West, there was a tendency that we follow them in like bluntly, but we have to think about, reflect ourselves on our past. So we have to uh, appreciate the civilization in the past, but at the same time, but there's a spirit of Korean. I don't want to call it a religion. I want to call it a spirit. So in Chinese letters, we can call it one tung, which means harmonize different things into one. We have the unique spirit for Koreans. The reason why BT is so popular in the global world is the, it causes uh, is it came from is the unique spirit of Koreans. Of course, when the uh, religion of uh, Buddhism came to uh, Korea. There were a lot of like people like die for their religion. The same goes for the Catholic and the Christian under the um conflict with the uh, Confucianism. But as time goes by, our traditional philosophy and the new philosophies make harmonies. And also, while the Chinese has a lot of subdivisions for the Buddhism. Whether a Korea could uh, like present a new concept of Buddhism that covers all the subcategories of Buddhism into one concept. Also, the other panelists mentioned about the overseas com uh, Korean community, and they are based on our. Uh, you mentioned about the uh, cr Christian community in the um, uh, Korean Christian community in America, but they are like trying to create a new concept for the uh, Christian in the state while c combining all the different ideas. So we can combine different ideas and create new one. So there's a communism and still because of that we still have a conflict, a serious conflict. But I believe that we can overcome the shortback of the political limitations and enter or to develop a bigger philosophy of politi uh, politics and make it as a common ground for our uh, nations. So Chairperson Mr. Na asked that why, there, why the conflicts and the division is so severe 
for the churches in the states and for the overseas Korean. I believe it is a process. We are on the process. So a single cell make a division in in order to make a growth, but ultimately they can become a one human in harmony. So it can be a process in the short term, but in the long term, it's a process to a bigger unification. So we, um, as you refer to the uh, experiences of the Christians. I can give you an answer in a Christian maxim. So we have a very great lesson from the Christian theories. So we can create a one common good with a lot of conflicts and with a lot of division. And that's the way and the direction that Koreans have to pursue. And also Professor Chu mentioned, I'd like to give an answer. Because of the COVID-19 pandemic, we have walls between countries. But at the same time, we cannot discriminate each other. We cannot discriminate Koreans against the foreigners. For the quarantine, we have to administer vaccination for all citizens in the world. We have to give like we have to provide vaccination not only for Koreans but also for Japanese in order to um achieve our target. So I believe the COVID-19 pandemic was a very good opportunity for us to realize that we are one community. So I'd like to turn my microphone to Cindy Ryu. Okay, I will answer it in Korean. My Korean is grade four. Korean people are already innovated and they are acknowledged by this innovative mindset. K-pop, K-food, K-culture in Korea and also Korean school. It seems very much useful method because Not just Korean, but there are Japanese and Chinese living in America, but there are still Asian hate in the U.S. So we are treated as outsiders eternally. Koreans, we are living here with second and third generations still were outsiders but we have k-pop so we're relieved so thank you so much for taking care of our second and third generations i know that you know the situation here you are also understanding the children of other people not just yours Politics and not-profit organization need more participation so that we can participate to come up with a resolution. And your Korean is very good. I am wife of a minister, but at the same time, I'm not a deacon, but I am taking care of this organization issue. So if you open up, there are disputes in American society also. But some Americans say to me that you Korean people look so united, we really envy you, but I just smile and say thank you. Many Korean people are starting up their businesses with the help of church. The most successful startup is that the startup should 
be able to sell their businesses to Google or Facebook at the end. And I hope you can do that to us also. Thank you very much, Representative Ms. Cindy Ryu. Your answer was so agreeable because I have an experience of studying the relationship between the Great Britain and Ireland. And when Ireland moved and immigrated to the US, they were facing the uh, discrimination and their children, their ancestors had become Kennedy and President Biden. So Irish people are so great people. And like Irish people, I hope Korean people will play a big role in the US someday. And that is the goal of Overseas Korean Foundation. I will finish the session now. Thank you very much for participating. Thank you so much. Please give a big round of applause to speakers and panelists, and we will adjourn the session now. Thank you.